evening and welcome to a special BC Day edition of Vital People. Tonight you're going to meet all kinds of amazing people and organizations from all over Vancouver Island, making a difference in the lives of others. And we begin tonight at another beach, Island View Beach on the Saanich Peninsula, and an organization that's helping young girls in their early teens, a time of huge physical changes, but also new challenges and responsibilities. It's called the Girls' Circle Project. This looks like young people cleaning a beach, caring for the environment. There's a little piece for someone. But it's much more. This is Girls Circle. We meet together weekly and we develop a sort of ritual and develop a sacred safe space where we can talk about topics that are really important to girls. Oh, that's a good piece. Because maturing in today's world is tough. If um, you look at the way society is with the pop culture and all the pressures uh, with the internet, uh, there's so many struggles that uh, girls are facing. The Girls Circle Project originated in California, offered at three Greater Victoria Middle Schools with the help of a grant from the Victoria Foundation. It's a safe, supportive program to help girls develop coping skills that will guide them throughout their lives. I was kind of, what am I doing here? I wonder if I'm going to fit in and then over time, it was just like, hey, these are my friends. I wish so much that I had something like this when I was in junior high school. Did you guys find any garbage in the fort down there? Deneo co-facilitates Girls Circle with Natalie, and she's seen huge growth in these Rock Heights Middle School girls. Especially in communicating with each other. Friendships between the girls that didn't exist at the beginning, confidence in articulating. Um, their ideas and how they feel about the different subjects that we talk about. It's just so much fun. You feel so comforted and like everybody's nice there. You never feel like nobody's ever on your side. I would love to see the program in every school and I also think every time I do this, um, do this program I always get boys coming in and popping their heads at, at lunchtime and asking, where's the boys circle? Uh, there's salami and ham over here. Because boys need just as much support. I'd encourage if there's any young men out there wanting to be good role models for, for the boys out there that to go ahead and get it going. I'm sure there's tons of funding out there. So that all our young people can feel supported through their challenging peer pressure filled adolescence. So great to see those girls cleaning up one of our beautiful beaches. Also beautiful, of course, are all the waters on our BC coast. But our waters, our mountains, our forests, they can all be dangerous. And that's where the more than 2,500 men and women who volunteer with BC Search and Rescue are so vital. So what does it take to become a SAR volunteer? Have a look. The BC Search and Rescue Association acts as a liaison between emergency response teams, the RCMP and local police. In any given year, SAR groups across this province respond day and night to more than a thousand incidents involving more than 1,300 missing or injured people. Together, these men and women donate more than 100,000 hours of their own time. Everybody probably has their own motives. Mine, I just wanted to have uh, some uh, volunteer effort in the community that would have meaning to me because I've spent my entire adult life on the waterfront. A professional shipwright by trade, Ed Walker has volunteered with Oak Bay Search and Rescue for 15 years. I'm not on crew anymore because of my age. But Walker plays a key administrative role, registering volunteers and assigning crews. We have a large turnover in, in, all, in both genders. It's uh, one of the things about it. People find out that it's not as nice out there sometimes as it looks on a sunny day. Crews try to anticipate and therefore prepare for every emergency, including capsizing of the rescue craft. Oak Bay Search and Rescue is practicing self-writing maneuvers in the warm waters of the rec center pool. It's pretty easy to get in a jam on the water. I mean, conditions can change quickly. Uh, the currents around here are so strong that people make poor decisions or, you know, uh, ill-advised. Dave Erickson keeps his boat at Oak Bay Marina and approached the SAR team about volunteering. And I've thought for a while that it would be a good thing to get involved with. I, I've never had to rely on it, but uh, it's nice to know it's there in case you do get in, in a jam. Members of Oak Bay Police and Fire Departments are also at this practice. We work very closely with the Oak Bay Fire and Oak Bay Police, and uh, we have to make sure that they're no, they know what we're doing if they're ever on our boat, and we have to know how they communicate as well. 
vital practice in communication, preparation and anticipation for whatever call comes in. Some of them are very mundane and some of them are very exciting. You just don't know what's coming. Now those are dedicated volunteers. And if it's got you thinking maybe you'd like to volunteer, but you're not too big on jumping into cold water, well, there are thousands of other volunteer opportunities out there. And one of the simplest and yet most rewarding might just be getting behind the wheel. It's just nice to be doing something for the community, sort of a little bit of payback. John Chase is heading out on another volunteer drive. You know, there's so many people in this town that have led very interesting lives, and so as you're driving into their appointments, you, you, know, you get to hear about their lives. And It's fun. It's fun. I quite enjoy it, meeting different people, hearing about their backgrounds and things that they've done, where they've been. As enjoyable as those chats are for the volunteers, it can mean even more to their passengers. Because somebody may be driving to a doctor's appointment, and the only person that they'll see that week who will talk to them would be the driver. Good morning, Saanich Volunteer Services. Saanich Volunteer Services Society is one of six organizations across Greater Victoria helping adults in the community stay independent in their own homes. I have 150 volunteers that drive people to doctor's appointments, shopping appointments. We also do minor home repair. We do companionship, which is a big deal, because a lot of our clients are over the age of 85. And at that age, loneliness is a huge concern. Your friends may not be around anymore, your spouse may not be around anymore. Hi. Social isolation is huge. My husband is 89 and I'm 81 and we don't have family in Victoria, so we cannot rely on friends all the time, so this is our family. Right now, there's a drive on to recruit volunteer drivers. I have a group of drivers that drive 50 drives a week, every week, and we cannot keep up with the demand. Saanich, Victoria, Oak Bay, James Bay, Esquimalt, and the Peninsula. Each of us are desperate for drivers. You'll need a clean driving record, a criminal check, a vehicle that seniors can get in and out of, and a few hours a week to commit to making a huge difference in someone's day. It's insurance policy. I'm, ho I'm hoping that when I need this sort of service, there'll be someone around like me to do it, so. More volunteers to meet when we come back, including... We're making cookies! The young people who give their energy to the Boys and Girls Club. And boy, do you need a lot of energy to volunteer there. We got Steve here. And if there's any puppeteers out there. We need some people to stand behind us <laughs> and make us tell our story. That's what we really need. But just before we go to break on this BC day, we're asking you, what is your favorite thing about living in our amazing province? Pretty much everything. We're big boaters, big sailors, and uh, nice and dog friendly. I like all the nice views that you can see and all the beaches that you can explore. Everyone is outdoors, like doing exercise, and it's just a great place to be. We love BC because one day we can be at the beach, and one day we can be snowboarding at Mount Washington. It's not freezing cold like Winnipeg. <laughs> Welcome back to this special BC Day edition of Vital People. For more than 50 years, the Boys and Girls Club has been supporting children, youth and families across Greater Victoria. Their goal is to help kids develop healthy relationships and build life skills and confidence too. We're making cookies! So you smush it up and then make it wants... Now this is mucky fun, but these kids are learning too. We provide kids with uh, opportunities and experiences that really help them grow and we challenge them to reach a little bit further, to really try something that they haven't tried before. This is Boys and Girls Club Services of Greater Victoria. A good place to be. That's our tagline, and it really is a good place to be. It's not good. It's awesome. Every day we go outside and play soccer, um, and we get to go on very fun out trips. Boys Club began in 1900 in St. John, New Brunswick, when a group of concerned local citizens set up a public playground. Now, boys and girls clubs across Canada offer kids a safe, supportive place to build positive relationships and develop life skills. I like that they're always 
around us so they can take care of us while taking care of others. This is our calf. I've been here for nine years, so it's a it's a luxury to get to watch um, you know some of these children go from kindergarten to grade five and, and see that progression uh, you know and, and, and be there as they kind of learn new skills and, and develop some confidence. They take us on out trips and take us to different places and it's really fun. Offered for children aged 6 to 12, programs vary. Talk it out, seek help. From after school care to reading, writing, arithmetic skills, practicums for child care students and youth leadership training. So is it mainly for kids at risk? We have a bit of a philosophy at Boys and Girls Clubs that really all kids, regardless of what kind of family background they have, are at risk. They let us play games. We can stay warm. We go in this facility, we go up to 45, uh, so it can get uh, energetic, it can be a bit noisy, um, but th they, they're really bringing their A game every day. I'll take the bananas. We have an amazingly dedicated staff team. Um, they're all well educated in the field. Staff are joined by well educated volunteers too. The demand is there. Parents want to have someplace safe that they know their kids are going to be looked after, that they're going to have fun, and that they're going to grow and learn more about themselves. Now whether it's at a boys and girls club or here on the beach, kids will be kids. And sometimes if they see something or someone a little bit different, they don't know how to react. The puppets in this next story are going to help with that. Oh, look at, we have a beautiful girl here. Beautiful indeed. Four puppets, special delivery from Toronto, arrive at Headway, Victoria Epilepsy and Parkinson's Centre. Modeled uh, after myself. Yes. <laughs> A fun, uh, colourful, unique learning tool. Center? There you go. Thank Welcome, you. Aisha. <laughs> we want to let all the children know what seizures are really like and what it's like to have epilepsy. Mike. <laughs> and what it's like to be a new immigrant to Canada, to struggle with fetal alcohol syndrome. There is your new puppet. And to be diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder, or ASD. We got Steve here. Steve. Kids with ASD, they, you know, are dealing with so much isolation because they have those communication issues and they display, you know, stereotypy, so they might be walking down the hallway doing something that looks really bizarre. When most children come to Canada, they don't speak very good English, maybe bullied because they don't dress the same way or speak the same way, and hopefully this will just help break down some barriers. We just met, traveled in a box to get here. <laughs> Once up and running, the awareness program will be available to Greater Victoria Elementary and Middle Schools. And finally, that's Mike. Carolyn hopes her puppet, Mike, will help kids understand the huge challenges facing children with fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. There's not a lot of knowledge out there for people on FASD, and I find it very hard for them to cope with other children, and some children can be mean. I'm going to tell all the kids about my seizures. So how can you help? You can ask a question, and I'll answer it. Well, are you, or do you know, a puppeteer? We need some people to stand behind us <laughs> and make us tell our story. That's what we really need. So, we want to have two troops. Ideally, we'd like to have about a dozen people. Yay! Barb is also looking for a volunteer coordinator. Those wonderful puppets came to be thanks to a grant from the Victoria Foundation, whose mandate is connecting people who care with causes that matter. Now, as you can imagine, that means they receive a huge variety of grant requests from all kinds of organizations. One of those is the Broadmead Care Society and one of their care homes, Nigel House. This is a place that most people don't know about. The place is Nigel yeah. House, which, along with Harriet House, provides subsidized residential care for adults with disabilities. Nigel House is a program for um, more mobility challenged folks. Um, it's 24-7 uh, care. Uh, Harriet House uh, is not 24-7, but uh, care uh, begins at 7 a.m. and ends at 11 p.m., so there is a bit of an overnight gap for them. Uh, but again, they are looked after. It's a residential care facility. And so much more. This is their home. And so the Live It Up program that Victoria Foundation has funded allows them to feel like they're part of this community. There's a, a, a controller here. Recreational therapist Rob Richter shows us what that funding makes possible. Powered wheelchairs right, with controls at here. the back. Up until two months ago, we, were t we would take Terry in the community, but we would be pushing him in a manual chair. 
like I say, Terry's a big man. And uh, so anywhere there was a hill or anything, we really had a tough time getting him up. Of the 26 residents at Nigel House, six share the two rear right control right chairs that Nigel House received a few months ago. Harriet House also received one chair. Each chair costs between five and seven thousand dollars. A lot of this equipment, uh, depending on how long the person's been in the chair, isn't covered by the system. So we're always looking for donations for people to step up and help these people to lead a more comfortable lifestyle. Which now includes getting out into the community. Go for walks. I mean, we take that for granted. You know, these folks don't get to do the things that we get to do. We took the group uh, to the breakwater uh, last week and uh, you know some of the people had never been on the breakwater. We're planning on uh, going to see some baseball games in the near future and you know just getting them out to do things like everybody else does. We're going to trip plan for Durant's Lake and again these chairs will be used for getting these guys out in the community. Amazing to think of the difference those wheelchairs are going to make for the residents of Nigel House. When we come back we're going to turn it up and break the silence about the second leading cause of death for Canadians under age 25. So let those kids know that they don't have to do that and that we love them and we want them to stay. And we'll visit another beach, Todd Inlet on the Saanich Peninsula, and find out about the purple martin, a little bird that 30 years ago was on the verge of extinction. But first, more of what you love about BC. BC is a beautiful place to live. The weather is fantastic. I love all the mountains for skiing and rock climbing and outdoor stuff. Going to the beach every day and living with my family. It's all year round you can do things. You can always doable weather. <laughs> my family is here and that's important. <laughs> I can golf all year round. The winters aren't like Winnipeg's and it's nice and green. Welcome back to our BC Day Vital People special. You know, right now, as we're enjoying this beautiful summer day, there are people struggling with mind-numbing depression. It's a terrifying thought for those who love them, and it's especially frightening if it's a young person who's severely depressed. Because for Canadians under age 25, suicide is the second leading cause of death. So how can we help? We need to break the silence around suicide and make some noise. Two youth a day in this country that die by suicide, and there's a million kids that are suffering who consider suicide as the answer to their problems. Shocking statistics from the executive co-director of Need2, an online support for youth in crisis. We used to do the phones, but we don't do the phones anymore. We just do texting and, texting and chatting. Because that's how youth communicate. And so, seven nights a week from 6 till 11, highly trained volunteers man the youthspace.ca website. I'd been hearing more about bullying online and uh, mental health issues, so I was searching something and I stumbled upon Youth Space. Amanda Lunny completed her psych degree, got a full-time job, and was looking for a way to give back. I think we all remember what it's like to be young and have these issues, and sometimes it's hard to speak to people you know or maybe you don't have someone, so... It's nice to be there for people and know that, you know, getting stuff out helps them. Hey, I'm Sam Roberts, encouraging you to turn it up. And now, Victoria's Need 2 has launched a campaign, Turn It Up, to break the silence that surrounds youth suicide. We go to funerals and we go to memorial services and we have minutes of silence for people that have already passed on. And so we thought, well, why don't we have minutes of noise for those that are still here to let them know that they're not alone. So let those kids know that they don't have to do that and that we love them and we want them to stay. I was actually lucky enough to be there when we kind of kicked it off in a way at Rock the Shores last year. And whether it's a music festival or a rotary club, the community is responding to let young people know we care. It's phenomenal to read the words of thanks and gratitude for these youth and saying, you know, you really made such an amazing impact on my life and I wouldn't be here if it weren't for your kind words or your listening. Hope has a sound and it's a sound you make when you say I care. Find out more at need2.ca. Chris Holt is such an amazing guy and I know he's grateful for the Victoria Foundation's support of Need2. 
Another one of the many organizations supported by the foundation is Sea Change Marine Conservation Society. They've been protecting BC watersheds around this province since 1998. And that includes Todd Inlet on the Saanich Peninsula, right next to the spectacular Butchart Gardens. Talk about a beautiful BC moment. This is Todd Inlet at the base of Gowland Todd Provincial Park in central Saanich, home to boaters, walkers and the purple martin. Purple martins are a species that were down to only five pairs in all BC in the 1980s and thanks to a, a, a nest box program throughout the west coast of North America from California up to southern BC, they've now recovered to the point of being over 800 pairs in BC alone. As steward of the Todd Inlet Purple Martin Colony, volunteer John Creviston builds, installs and oversees these nesting boxes, which were built on the old pilings from the original Butchart Lime Quarry Marine Dock, a bit of a challenging location. So, you can hold it steady, do you want to climb down? Sure. We rely uh, on uh, the Sea Change Society people with their Pumpy Dumpty boat to help us get out there to install the nest boxes and to clean the nest boxes and to replace nest boxes and do repairs. Pumpty Dumpty is operated by Sea Change Marine Conservation Society, a non-profit group that's been restoring and conserving watersheds from the Lower Mainland to Haida Gwaii since 1998. Obviously they need a boat in order to check the birds, clean out the boxes, do the banding, that kind of thing. So frequently we'll get a call and we'll have to find a time when there's high enough water or we need a ladder, something like that. It's just one of this little boat's duties, with volunteer Sarah Verstegen at the helm. Pumpty Dumpty's main role is to keep this fragile inlet clean. All these boats that are behind me in the inlet, most of them have toilets. Now we don't have a whole lot of places people can empty their toilets without going straight into the water unless you call Pumpty Dumpty or you go to a pump-out station. And while the Purple Martins may be dive-bombing John, he perseveres. This is now the largest colony on the island and fourth largest in the province. Uh, we just did a count of 130 babies just this season alone. And so that's a very positive, a very, a very measurable uh, way to, to know that it's a worthwhile project to do. Bringing back a little bird from the brink of extinction. John is so devoted to those little birds. Now, if you'd like to see the Purple Martins, it's a lovely walk down the Gowland Todd Trail just off Wallace Drive near Butchart Gardens on the Saanich Peninsula. Thanks for watching this special BC Day edition of Vital People. And you know, just in the same way that a sand castle needs the support of a good foundation, all of the organizations you've just been watching have the support of a great foundation, the Victoria Foundation. And that means if you support the Victoria Foundation, you're supporting all those great organizations. Thanks for watching and have a great BC day.